Now, I have a very special exclusive interview with Frank Badami from Badami TV. And, Frank, are you there? Yes, I am. I'm right here, Amitra, and thank you for calling me. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So let's get right to the interview because I do know that you're extremely busy, and I first want to thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to also a productive schedule to to talk with Anthony Magazine and share a little bit about you and your company and your TV program. Okay, so um, if you don't mind, I know I mentioned it earlier, if you would like to introduce yourself and your company and tell a little bit about your company. Sure. Uh, my name is Frank Badami. My company is Badami TV. Uh, I'm the president of the company, and along with my daughter, uh, we own Badami TV, and uh, we've been in business for uh, about 25 years. Uh, we've had okay. programming in, in first-run syndication for that long, and uh, that's what Badami TV has, has been doing. It's been producing uh, content for syndicated television, uh, some documentaries, and, and some, for some other platforms. Okay, great. Now, who or what inspired you to go into this field of producing for television? Well, I could easily say that I followed my father's footsteps. My father began in television uh, in the 1940s and okay. uh, continued from there and, and did some really incredible things. And I, once I decided to go this way, it just seemed very natural. Oh, Oh, great. So that's more of a family, a family um, business operation. That's wonderful and inspired by your dad. So that's, that's great. Okay, now yeah. tell us a little bit about your TV shows that you produce and how often do they air? Okay, what currently is on the air is African American short films and gospel music presents. Uh, these shows are one hour quarterly, first run syndicated programs. That is to say, each show is on your specials, and they're on four times a year. They're on uh, nationally. Oh, okay. And it's a wonderful opportunity that you're giving uh, for the African-American independent filmmakers. What are the requirements to submit short films for consideration for African-American short films? Well, it's really very simple. I mean, the first thing I suggest for people to do is go to the website, uh, badamitv.com, and there is a selection you could make for submit. And other, uh, other than some fairly easy uh, submittal uh, rules and regulations uh, in, in terms of, of technically what we, what we need, we need network quality programming because we're on ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, so forth and so on across the country. And, and what they accept in terms of quality of program is important. Other than that, I saw a question that uh, you had further down your list when we accept programming, and I can tell you that our door is constantly open. You just go to the website, www.badamitv.com, select Submit, and submit, and we'll be happy to view your work. Okay. And off of the questions, uh, portion. I wanted to make sure that I mentioned this. I always consider you as my online mentor, even though we never met each other. I oh, don't know you. when it started, but I started off with receiving emails for Badami t television programs. And if I'm not mistaken, it started with Gospel Music Presents. And then I started yeah. getting the uh, African American short film. I have learned and I will tell you this, I have learned because I did submit and my submissions were rejected, but I know why. And back then I didn't understand, but I know I know now why. And I really appreciate your honesty and not me thinking like a lot of, uh, of fellow filmmakers may think that, you know, you make a movie and it's a good storyline and you submit it and boom, you should get it. It should be in the door. But there are so many things that I learned after our conversation uh, with, with sound and uh, just different things that's very important in making uh, even a short film. So I really appreciate that, and I, I always like to share and spread the word. So I'm also a promoter. So I've been telling a lot of people throughout the course of the decades, actually, tune in, especially when it's in Chicago area, you know, make sure that they tune in. 
And so I really appreciate your honesty for that, and it helped me do better. And I take my time, which is what you told me, take your time. And so hopefully uh, now that I do know those different things that I need to needed to work on, I can submit a great uh, program for consideration. And now I'm going to ask okay. you, if, if, if there's... If, if, I could, if oh, I'm sorry. ever, if there's anything I do that's of any help to anyone, then it's really my mission in life. You know, we're, we're all working together. It, it, there's a lot that goes into taking, having an idea and bring it to, to manifestation, bring it out, right out into the yeah. world in fruition where people can tangibly sit down and see and hear your work. There's a lot that goes into it. You know, it, it's not as simple as, uh, as just getting a camera and shooting. We know that. It's not. <laughs> you are we absolutely, you are absolutely, <laughs> absolutely correct. If you see, if only you could see my very first trailer that I made back in 1991, I just laughed so hard and I told my kids I'm going to show them. <laughs> and I mean, I'm, I'm going to show you in secrecy one day and that's how far I've come. I've come. I thought it was so easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. You know, it's it's all. I mean, I, I'm growing. I'm I'm a filmmaker. I direct. I, you know, and uh, I, I'm growing. You know, I I like some of the stuff I do, but I always think I can improve. And I think some of the best filmmakers in the world will always uh, appreciate that about themselves. With let's keep learning and growing. Yes, absolutely. Now, is there a specific genre that you're mostly interested in when receiving submissions? Nope, not at all. No, when it comes to African-American short films, uh, I'm open to all genres. And I like to say, I think I wrote this line a long time ago, so it's familiar to me. But, but we air everything from comedy to drama and all the shades in between. You know, we put on documentaries, uh, but there are many documentaries. I, one time we put on a documentary that was edited down to about a half hour. And okay. we thought that the, the content was important enough to, to put on our piece. But, but people tend to do what I call long short films, 30, 35, 40 minute long. You know, that, that's a lot. Uh, to get on yeah. African-American short films, I really am looking for short films. And that means anywhere from one minute to maybe 13, 14 minutes if the piece is really exceptional. Okay. But, okay. Uh, but that's that's what I'm looking for. That's what it takes oh, okay. to be on this show because that's what it takes to communicate with our viewing audience nationally. I, I agree. And that was one of my questions that, although I didn't have it on my list, I was going to ask if you could give that, that uh, cap between, you know, one minute. And a lot of people are like, you can make a movie in one minute? Yes, I've seen it happen. And then going not, well, probably not I mean, to go look, over. Right. I mean, let's look at it. You know, there are many commercials now, and I've been putting them on for years, that are 15 seconds, and they tell a story. Yes. Beginning, yes. middle, and end. Yes, and it does it the can job. Be done. Within the, it can be yes, done. Yes, it can. Okay, and like I said, I have mentioned that I've been following your TV programs for, I know, at least over a decade. And when I'm not able to watch live, I set my recording device, and I always tell, I have, I have old oh, emails <laughs> where I sent it out a long time ago. Now, there's a couple of my favorite short films that stand out. And um, I don't know the title, but I do know the concept. But one that really stands out was uh, uh, and was a biblical storyline. Um, and I, it, it's kind of foggy for right now, but I want to be able to go back in and take a look at it again. I just remember that the one of the characters turned into a pillar of salt. I thought that was I, I liked that. And it was, a, it was another. <laughs> I remember <laughs> I really, those pieces. Like, we different. We yes. we. we put, yes. We put them on in the fourth quarter of each year, and the fourth quarter show for gospel is a gospel Christmas, and we put okay. uh, short films short films on during that period of time with a, a lighter fare, and I remember those biblical pieces very well, and we enjoyed putting them on. They communicated well. The audience was very entertained. You know, we want to entertain and give information. You know, we never put on a film that has violence for the sake of violence, for the sake of, oh, you know, this is exciting. We never put on a film that doesn't have a message to it. Some, sometimes there's even a message in straight-out entertainment. 
It has okay. to be entertaining to get its point yes. across. And that's what we're Exactly. Doing. Exactly. Now, do you have an all-time favorite uh, uh, um, as far as uh, one of the African American no, short uh, films? No, I, I really don't, Rich. I, I don't. Uh, okay. And I'm not being political. We've been on, uh, that show has been on for 16 years. And okay. there's been so many good films. I can only tell you that what is running right now in the first quarter, we've done something a little different. And what okay. we've done is we've we've taken uh, a handful of films and put them into into that show that have actually aired before. But each okay. one of those films, g- g- given the, the the state of our our, our society right now in 2020, our, the politics in 2020, uh, uh, spiritual okay. needs in, in this time, we put out a compilation in our first quarter that's airing nationally as we speak that has messages, very strong, direct, clear messages. Now, okay. There, there's a there's a piece called Shazam, which was uh, taken off a, taken off a CNN story. And the bottom line is, it, it's a, a man educating his young son that if he stops okay. for the police, put his hands up, keep his hands where they can be seen. He'll bring a tear to your eye. There's another piece on there called Wolf Call, which is a very dynamic piece. It's it's a incredible piece. We've all heard stories about uh, the unfortunate uh, uh, murder of Emmett Till. Well, this particular okay. piece is ta- taken from uh, from an interview, actual recorded interviews from the killers, from the people who were actually somehow found innocent but admitted what they did. Uh, th- these are. Um, impactful story. They're strong. There's stories that are historic that have to be passed on from one generation to another. And right. I think it's must see, must see TV. It is, and it's relevant. Yes. I can't wait to see those. I, I try to make sure that I tune in each time that I see you, um, the, I get the email or, uh, on social media to let me know when it's coming cool. on. And again, I set I set my DVR, my my VCR uh, oh, recording. That's we got to say recording device. Well, you, you know, you've mentioned that a couple of times. If you if you go to our website, uh, not only for African American short films but for gospel music presents, one of the things that you can do is to sign up to be notified when the show is specifically on in your area. And, you know, it's okay. your, your city or the, it's actually known as a market, what market you're in. And we send those out days before each airing. And we also text people who, who ask to be texted during that period of time to, to be notified. Now, that's what I have to do. I, I am on an email. I did sign up. But text, I'm trying to get into now with the texting. So I will definitely make sure that I get on the text list. As well. Oh, terrific! Just go back. Uh, just go back to the website and go where you okay. sign up, and, and it'll happen for you. Okay, awesome. And now, um, I know that some of your um the programs are available on demand. Is it every all the content or uh, uh specific ones that's on demand? Do you still continue well, on, to on, have on on the website? We have a VOD, as you're pointing out. And what we do is after a show completes its cycle, let's say the first quarter shows, when they're done in uh, sometime in late March or early, early March, uh, then we take them and put them on our video on demand, just, just that one episode, so that people okay. who only saw part of it or, or, or not the whole thing, let's say, uh, have an opportunity to view it. The reason that we don't put it on simultaneously when it's running is because we don't want to water down the ratings for those television stations. Uh, okay. But, but I, I can I I can tell you what's coming up is uh, we are developing. You know we have three apps. We're on um, Roku. Uh, Batami TV is on Roku, Android TV, okay. and Amazon Fire okay. TV. And on each one of those apps, we have three channels: Batami TV. Okay. Gospel Music Presents, and African American Short Films. There's probably about 110, 120 of our shows up there. I'm adding it. And, I'm uh, adding it as soon as I get home. Oh, cool, cool. And, and one of the things that's coming up that we're developing this year will be a subscription-based uh, Badami TV streaming, just like everyone else. Okay. Everyone's streaming, and I'm streaming right yeah. along with them. And uh, uh, it'll give people the opportunity 
to see the, the, the very current shows if they happen to miss them in, on television and syndication. And there'll be other okay. content uh, that uh, that's not available right now, uh, but will be in the subscription-based aspect. That is that is really great to hear, and the reason why is because sometimes, uh, well, I know uh, we have the antenna, and sometimes uh, we miss some things if I don't have cable to have the recording device. So uh -huh. that's good to know that you have the app yeah. because we do have the Roku uh, te television. So I will definitely add on the app, oh, cool. and so I can catch up with some of the. Oh, that's this is really great because oh, I know there are oh, some boy. that I did actually miss. Especially uh, because I was like, I was actually in Los Angeles the uh, week of uh, Christmas. We went for Christmas, and I was like, oh my goodness! And I saw the uh, gospel gospel Christmas. I usually try to watch it all the time. Now, will I be able to also catch up on the gospel Christmas um, episode as well on your Roku channel? Uh, the gospel. There are a bunch of the gospel Christmas shows on the Roku channel. Eventually, okay. after the shows have made their cycle, they'll also end up okay. on Roku, uh, uh, Android, and Amazon Fire, you know, and, and you'll be able to see them. But And also, you, you know, the, the VOD. Okay. But, um, uh, now I do yeah. have a question about uh, um, Gospel Music Presents. Do you also um, accept submissions from independent songwriters or musicians? For that, how does that process what, what, work? Uh, it, it, uh, okay, the submissions that we accept are uh, not just songs that are, it's television, so you can't just accept audio, but uh, we are open for business all the time, and we have many uh, artists that uh, send us their work, their completed videos. And I'm, I'm okay. here to tell you that we, we started something fairly new on television about six years ago, that long ago, we okay. started accepting on the Gospel Music Show independent artists coming up through social media and other platforms. Not only the okay. record label hit people who have uh, the gospel hits and, and the standard uh, artists who've been around for a long time. I, I, I've seen okay. broke, uh, broke nationally a, a fair amount of artists. And we've been very successful with that because sometimes you may not know a gospel artist's name but what's really important okay. is the performance. It's the performance. And okay. That's what we put out. Yeah. Okay. And I really love what you're doing, even with that cat, with the uh, gospel music presents, giving independent artists an opportunity. Uh, a lot of times, a lot, you know, you're supposed to have an agent, and sometimes you're not able to land that agent. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's how it is in the music industry, but I do know uh, as far as like with um, when you're doing your acting and you're doing your films and different things like that. So I really love the fact that you're giving those who normally may not get that platform or the opportunity, at least an opportunity to submit. And so that's yes. a great thing. And yes. now for a gospel Christmas, do you also mm -hmm. have that same process where you receive or, or, do you have um, more, mostly mainstream uh, for uh, performance? No, no. We, you... we we have we have a lot of independent artists on the on the Christmas show, also the Gospel Christmas, uh, and and we're we just like with African American short films on our Gospel shows, we're always open for business. There's never a time when you can't submit. We're we're looking at material for this year's fourth quarter Gospel Christmas show as we speak. You know, uh, oh, okay. we juggle okay. things around. We're, we're always looking for a good mix of what we think entertains an audience at that point in time. Okay. So, you know, we might have a show that we, uh, excuse me, a video uh, or, or a short film that we thought we were going to put in the first quarter show, but we think it plays better in the mix that we're designing for the second or third quarter or the fourth quarter. So we move things around in order to, okay. we, we think we think we have a blend and the ratings show that uh, that it works, that we really do communicate well with our audience. We're the highest rated gospel television show uh, per Nielsen, Nielsen rating system uh, on the air. And we're the, okay. really the only one uh, in in, um, in syndication. You know, we, we hold that ground. We're the only real short film show in syndication. Although I've seen a Latino piece try to start up recently 
but uh, but you know, like I said, we're on the CBS's, ABC's, and NBC's, uh, CW Fox's uh, across the across the yeah. country, and so people get okay. a lot of exposure. Yes, and I I love the shows. I, I I'm telling you, I've Thank watched. You. The, oh, I can't even remember how long, but and I like I said, I had email. Um, and I've been, I know I've been getting emails, but even before then, uh, just watching it on television, I just remember, um, uh, during that course of time, when this first started coming on and watching, uh, the gospel music present that's, um, and I love that show and I look forward to watching all of them actually. Oh, and now I, I do have, have to, a question. I have, have, have that opportunity on, on the apps that we have that I mentioned. Okay. Go ahead. Now, Go the ahead. Eastsiders. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, the Eastsiders, um, it's a oh, documentary my that, that yes. struck my interest. What, what was your involvement with this production? Well, at the time, uh, there was an editor, Alicia Rigney, who, by the way, I, I would really recommend that, that you interview Alicia because Alicia is very special. She's been editing uh, Badami television uh, productions, whether they were the television shows, documentaries, and other things that we've done for, okay. I think, 16 years now. And, okay. Um, yeah, and, and, and Alicia's very special. But, but uh, I, other than that, um, I'm sorry, the, the main question you're just asking me is if I... Oh, well, the Insiders. Oh, no, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, the oh, documentary, well, she, the she, she She had someone that she was doing some editing for who actually was a, a Supreme Court judge in the state of California, and he was starting okay. to document uh, the history of African Americans in Los Angeles from 1920 to 1965. And uh, she suggested he talk to me, and, and he did. And I put the show together. I, I got a concept for it. I produced it. I directed uh, okay. it's, um, the The local... Uh, uh, the PBS station, KLCS here in Los Angeles, their educational channel still plays it. I think we did that okay. one about eight, eight, nine years ago. Yeah. But it's a very okay. important piece, and it really documents the African-American community here in Los Angeles uh, in a very okay. uplifting and, and, uh, and positive way, but a very, very true and realistic way. I, um, I'm very fond of it. Matter of fact, uh, it was the last major piece of music that uh, saxophonist Buddy Collette composed before he passed, and I had uh, the fortunate time to be able to produce that with him. We produced about 85 minutes worth of music to score it. Okay. And it was uh, nothing short of thrilling. I have to get my copy. I have to get my copy. I okay. saw that, and, I, okay. and I, I looked at the description, and I said, this is interesting, uh, because I know a few years back, Maybe about 10 years ago, I had purchased uh, DVDs of Oscar Michael, um, and then there was a couple others in Cab Calloway, uh, you know, with Oscar Michael, the movies back from the 1920s. And when Mm -hmm. I saw this, I said, I have to support this. I have to get a copy. And now, is it in just DVD format? Yeah, I've got them in DVDs. Uh, As a matter of fact, uh, just to thank you for this interview, I'll... I'll get your address and I'll, I'll send you a copy. You know, this is a perfect oh, example. Okay. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, no, I was just saying thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're very welcome. But what I want to say is that we were talking earlier about what it takes to make a film. Now, when you see this, this is a feature-length documentary, and it is certainly low budget, but what it contains <clears throat> are these very heartful stories. Uh, told in, it, it's a quick moving piece and it has a certain amount okay. of dimension to it but um, it reminds you of how close we are to what might have been taught as of as the past you know okay. we're talking about people who would say tell us stories about how their aunt would be the first woman in Los Angeles the first black woman in Los Angeles to work for mm-hmm. Bank of America you know, or or the the, the first uh, man that he'd be on camera uh, expressing that he was the first fireman to be integrated in Los Angeles, and you realize that's not that long ago. And unfortunately, we're still living with a lot of those precepts, and our society has still has more more love to have and more growth to go through. Okay. But I'll be sure, but I'll be sure you get the copy. 
Oh, thank you so much. I, I'm, I'm excited by, by when way, I saw copy, that. I said, let me see what this is about. <laughs> uh, it, it's a good piece. The, the copies are available. Uh, I, I do sell them on uh, online on our site. But I want to tell you that okay. uh, Badami TV has never made any any money off that documentary. As a matter of fact, it, it cost us money, but it was uh, it, it was a, a, just a passion of ours that we wanted to to help okay. uh, the judge make, and uh, okay. it it worked out very well. It, as a matter of fact, um, it, it it's been I was contacted some a couple of years back. And it's now even in the, the Los Angeles Library has copies of it that they okay. they they did it legitimately. They said no, you can't give it to us. We have to buy it. So I sold them a couple of copies, and they've made it available. You can go to the library okay. and, and view it. Yeah. And I think it's a good investment as well, especially for fellow filmmakers, actors. I mean, they have to see it from the beginning process. A lot of people think that it is really simple, and I'm here to tell you it is not, but it can be done, but you just have to, Mm -hmm. you know, be willing to take the constructive criticism, be Mm -hmm. able to, uh, you know, take the training, and and like I'm going to watch the e-fighters. Now, I did see something on your website about the Badami Foundation. Has that been formed Uh yet, or... That's in the, in the work. The, 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 the Badani uh, Foundation is, is quite quiet on its side, but uh, it, it is something there to support uh, support the arts. You know, it, it's supporting uh, education uh, through entertainment is, is what the Badami Foundation does. And I, okay. I, I don't solicit to the general public for, for donations. It's something that, I, that uh, we fund internally. And we've had some other people put up... Uh, some funding for it, but uh, that's specifically what it's for. And, oh, okay. Uh, well, nothing, that sounds nothing, great. Nothing more. Enough. But but I, I'd like to say something to the to okay. filmmakers. Okay. I, I, you know, whether you're behind the camera or in front of the camera, I want to say something to all the wonderful people who put together gospel uh, videos uh, in front of the camera, behind the camera. And the thing is this. You've got to get up every day. And you've got to do something about your art. You've got to do something about your creative expression. You've got to work on these things. You can't just have ideas and talk them down and read the Hollywood Reporter or Variety. It, 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 that, that is all interesting, but really has nothing to do with you and your creative process. It, it, it's like playing the piano. Or it's like singing. You've got to sing every day. You've got to exercise that muscle. You've got to develop it. You've got to come to places in, in your creative thoughts that express differently from what you did yesterday. You've got to grow. And the only way to do it is to film, make, and sing, and perform every day. Well said. Very well said. And I, I know I have a lot of filmmakers that's going to be listening in and, and viewing everything from your article that is well said, and and that was my next question. I was going to ask for advice. So, I agree with you one hundred percent. I really do, and I see a lot on social media. Uh, you know, we we have to definitely make sure that we're. I think passion, um, not mm-hmm. to give up, but you know everything that you said that you have to do, and it's almost every well, it's every day. That you know, if this is something that you're really trying to strive for, and to make sure that that you really, really make make it the best work, and just do it with excellence. And uh, so, I agree with you 100. I, percent I, I I want to talk one more time to our filmmakers and our, our gospel music video makers in front of and behind the camera in both instances. Um, yeah. This, I'm, going to, I'm going to talk about something that I've done for many years, including when I worked for the studios and the, and the networks. And, that, and it's okay. this. This is, re, this is regarding interns. Uh, people think that, uh, that one way to get ahead is to, to become an intern. People think that one way to, to get their, their production completed is to hire, not hire, but work with interns. And they think that, uh, for the most part, many people think that it's okay to not pay people and people are learning something and so forth and so on. And I want to bring up a, a different way of looking at this. You get what you give. 
and I don't. I I I pay people. I pay people even when uh, I was with the networks and the studios. I I paid my interns. These are. I don't know a person's uh, situation where they are financially, but I do know if they're working on my production that they deserve to be reimbursed for their time and reimbursed yeah. for their expenses if they're using their car. It's like. It's it's spiritually I believe it's spiritually incorrect not to use the medium of exchange. And the medium of exchange is that I pay you for your service. You give me, I give you. And you'll find I think people will find by doing that it's a balance. Let's let's get off that, hey, do this for me for nothing, I'll get you on the back end and all this all, all of that stuff has to go. And you'll yeah. find that if when you start to actually pay people you know, so some people that you don't pay an intern what you pay the director, but at the but at the same time you have to give something in exchange for the service that you're receiving, on top of the education that you're giving. That that that's your responsibility to to educate yeah. uh, an intern. But you'll find that the level of what you do spiritually raises, and that means that everything from your from the acceptance of your work uh, for, uh, the, as the audience accepts it right on to what you can earn financially is is a part of how you treat everyone else. You want to be treated Absolutely. well financially? Then treat everyone well financially. And I, I think it's important for us to, to get off that old way of doing things and, and take care of everybody on the show. Take care of it. I don't yeah. care. If you could only give someone twenty five dollars for that day, I don't care if you could only give them fifty or a hundred, whatever your budget is, but give them right. Make give give them the the respect of of paying them for their work, and and and, and I think it's important. You'll see the benefits. You, you get what you give, and you give what you get. That is so true, and the energy that you put out is what you're going to give back. That's right. We're in agreement. Mm-hmm. Well, I wow. really love what you do for the community. And again, having only met you online, and you, you seem to be an inspiration to me and a positive influence. Oh. And I'm going to tell you, these two words that you use brighten my day. I don't care <laughs> what I'm going through that day. And if I say something, I post something, you say good thoughts. And I really appreciate that because it, it just those two times, it, it makes bring me back to like, okay, yes, I need <laughs> I need to have good thoughts because sometimes with the way of the world nowadays, you know, and you have to have the tough skin, but sometimes it's just something may occur and you're like, and then I see your post and you say good thoughts and it brings me right back. So I really appreciate that. That's the way to start our meetings, to put it in the middle of the meetings and to end our meetings. We have good thoughts. We have good thoughts for what we're doing and for each other. Good thoughts all the time about myself. Yes. Good thoughts, absolutely. Good thoughts. Now, um, do you, uh, would you prefer our readers and listeners right now to connect with you on social media or go directly to your website and then they can connect on social media for those who are on Facebook uh, on, on the different social media platforms? I, I, I don't have a preference. Whatever anyone's comfortable, if they're comfortable signing up on social media, uh, you know, and, and, or, or going to social media on African-American short films or gospel music presents those Facebook pages. Uh, we tweet. Uh, if you want to pay attention to where we are on weekly through those pages, we certainly post every week uh, what we're doing. Uh, you can sign up on our website to be notified. I have no preference Whatever someone's comfortable with, we'd love to text you. Whatever you like, we're going to try and communicate with you and make this process and communication as easy as possible. Great. Sounds good to me. And I encourage everyone to sign up, join the website, connect on social media. You can be either you're the, uh, the audience and watch and support these shows. I want to thank you so very much for the exclusive interview, and it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much, Mitra. Thank you. Okay. Good thoughts to everyone. Okay. Good thoughts. Good thoughts. Okay, and you have a great Ciao. one. Ciao. Ciao. Bye-bye.